Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 1F, where we're going to be talking about how the information in DNA is used to code for proteins. And coding is really very much, it's a very informational word, but it is very much the right word for what happens. So we'll talk about how messenger RNA must be decoded to a different language in protein synthesis from the language of the bases, the nucleotide subunits of DNA, into the language of amino acids, the subunits of protein. The genetic code isn't the DNA sequence. The genetic code is the code book that explains how the translation from one language to another is going to happen, just like any other code book or a, a foreign language dictionary. Um, the actual translation is done by molecules called transfer RNAs. Now, we've said several times that the order of the bases in the messenger RNA specifies which amino acids are going to be joined to make the protein. The genetic code is the specification, the connection between bases and amino acids. And it's read in groups of three bases. So here we have part of a messenger RNA. Here we have it split into groups of three bases, which are going to be, these are the codons. Remember, we use the term codon in the context of the start codon and the stop codon. The start codon is always specifies the amino acid methionine. The stop codon doesn't specify any amino acid at all, and that's why translation stops at this point. Each of these codons corresponds to a particular amino acid, AUG with methionine, ACG with threonine, etc. Now, molecular biologists communicate the code usually in various tables. Here's an example of a typical genetic code table where the rows here, this row specifies all, shows all the codons that start with A. This row, this column, shows all the codons whose second letter is C. And then this box is all the codons that start with A, C, and any of the four um, third position bases all specify threonine. That's not always the case, but it is in a number of cases. And you'll see the importance of this when we talk about mutations in module 2. Now, the cell, as I said, cells don't use a genetic code table. The table is just something that geneticists have come up with. In the cell, the interpretation of the code is done by transfer RNA molecules. So again, here's our messenger RNA with the, the division into codons marked off for us. Here is a typical transfer RNA. This is transfer RNA glutamate. So we'll write its name as tRNA glue, and it has a glutamate amino acid attached to one end. This is an RNA molecule. Remember we talked about how RNA molecules can fold up and different parts of them can form base pairs with other parts. And that's how what starts as a stretched out linear RNA folds into this complicated structure. The key feature of this structure, apart from its particular amino acid, is the presence of a set of three unpaired bases called the anticodon. which are complementary to the codon for methionine. So the transfer RNA brings the glutamate to the messenger RNA inside the complicated structure that I've been referring to, the ribosome. So the ribosome is the big protein synthesis factory. 
And in that factory, glutamate will be added to the growing chain of amino acids specified by this chain of bases, the messenger RNA. Now, here's a second drawing with um, showing a simplified transfer RNA for each amino acid. There's a different transfer RNA for each amino acid with the appropriate anticodon. So here's this is the methionine transfer RNA with its anticodon, the threonine transfer RNA bringing threonine, threonine to base pair with the complement of those three bases. So this is how the genetic code is translated, is used to translate the base sequence of a messenger RNA from the base sequence of a gene into the amino acid sequence of a protein. Now, a key concept for thinking about how genes specify proteins is that of reading frames. So, in principle, in a DNA sequence, every three base sequence is a potential codon. I've marked off this sequence here in groups of three, which are all potential codons if this happened to be a gene. But in fact, of course, there are three ways to read this sequence, depending at which base you start. So you could be reading in this reading frame, or in this reading frame, or in this reading frame, starting with different groups. So we have three potential reading frames. Going in this direction on this DNA strand, we have another three reading frames in the other direction, read from the other strand. Now, I'll show you in the next module how geneticists analyze reading frames. But to the cell, the cell doesn't get confused by this. And that's because in the cell, the cell doesn't translate DNA. The cell translates messenger RNA. And the only things that are considered by the ribosome are sequences that have a promoter so that they can be transcribed. And then they are potentially translatable. So again, here's our um, sequence with its reading frames. But here's a messenger RNA that's been translated from this DNA sequence. Now, this already eliminates three reading frames from consideration because we've only got one strand, which means that the ribosome will have to move in that direction. Now, to the ribosome, once it encounters a RNA that could be a messenger RNA, what it looks for is a site, a short sequence called a ribosome binding site, which is always very close to the start codon of the gene. And the ribosome binds at the ribosome binding site. There's the ribosome. And it moves along the RNA until it encounters the first AUG. And that AUG sets the reading frame. From that AUG on, the sequence is read in groups of three. Oops, back. Um, in these groups of three, um, any other methionine codons, any other AUGs, are just treated as methionine codons. They're not treated as start points um, at all. Furthermore, stop codons are recognized only if they're in the same reading frame as the AUG that started synthesis. Any stop codons that are out of frame are ignored. Um, any, out, in fact, any out of frame combinations of any kind are ignored by the ribosome. It only sees the reading frame that's set by the AUG that it started with. So what we've done, we've talked very much in the language of, of information. We talk about coding, we talk about reading, we talk about translating um, codons or words. So Really, literally, genes do encode proteins, going from one language, the language of nucleotides, to the language of amino acids. And the code is read in words that
that are groups of three bases. It's as if in our language all the words were three letters long. The genetic code is the code book that translates the language. We'll talk later about how geneticists use the code book, but to a cell, the code book is physically instantiated in the transfer RNA molecules that bring the amino acids to the codons of the messenger RNA in the ribosome. We talked about reading frames and how, although there are many potential reading frames, the ribosome knows which reading frame to consider because A, it's only looking at a messenger RNA, not both strands of a gene, and it uses a ribosome binding site and the first start codon, the first AUG in the messenger RNA, to tell it where to start. This sets the reading frame and determines how the messenger RNA will be translated. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk a bit more about the regulatory interactions and complications involved in genes becoming proteins. I hope to see you there.